We're in season three of Inside Athletics, brought to you by the IAAF. I'm your host, Atto Bolden. In three seasons, we have never had a special request guest. Up until today, because when I found out that my guest today would be here, I specially requested that she join us on the program. My guest today is the reigning U.S. champion at 800 meters, and she's also previously been a world youth and world junior champion, Ajay Wilson. Welcome to the program, Ajay. Thanks, Thanks for, for joining me. us. My first question to you is, you've had such success at a junior level, and everybody thought she was gonna, you were going to go and have a great NCAA career and would see you in four years, and yet you chose to skip that part. Tell me what prompted that decision. Now, initially it was actually watching the 2012 Olympics on TV and um, seeing them go through the trials and just seeing how close I was to being at that level. And, you know, I just, the next opportunity that I had to compete at that level, which would have been the world championships, I wanted right. to try and I wanted to take my chances. So that's what initially prompted the decision. Now, I know your role model is Joetta Clark. I am a huge fan mm -hmm. of the entire Clark family, everybody <laughs> from JJ um, on down to Joetta. Tell me about what that relationship is like and what you go to her for in your own career now. You know, I really look towards her for longevity. She's competed at the highest level yes. and she's done it well, well into the end of her career as well. Yes, so yes. Um, my coach and I, you know, we just focus on looking ahead and looking where I'll be in, you know, five, maybe 10 years if I'm lucky. Right. And just thinking about the future, not focusing so much on now. I want to go back to the 2013 World Outdoor Championships in Moscow. You are by far the youngest in that race, and yet you come out with uh, a, a sixth place finish, and you were having an awesome year that year. Um, tell me about your memories of that race, and you know if you felt any pressure, you know, towing the line as the final gun sounded. You know, I didn't feel that much pressure at that point. I felt like I had won already, <laughs> only because. You know, going into the season, my coach was just like, our goal is to make the final, make the final. And then once I made the final, I was like, okay, whatever I do now is just a bonus. It's just going to be icing on the cake. Um, so I just went out there and ran as hard as I could, you know. Looking back, there's probably some things that I could have done differently. Mm -hmm. But um, it was a great first time, first go around, first experience. So now two years later, we're in a world championship here again. And of course, you have to go and try out to make that U.S. team. But if you're, in, if you're able to make that team that's headed to Beijing, what did you learn, if anything, in Moscow that you think you can take to improve your position in Beijing? Since Moscow, I've just learned to be a competitor. You right. know, I was racing scared. I was like, really? okay, yes, I really was. I was like, you know, I don't know if they come through this fast, if I'll be able to hang, if I'll be able to keep up. And, you know, it's just taking a lot more, putting in more training and having more confidence in my coach and just in myself that's going to help me compete there. So many of the stars of this sport train with big groups you don't have that sort of situation. You have a more intimate setting. Um, tell me about what your, your situation is. I know you train in Philadelphia yes. outdoors. Yes. Tell me about a little bit more about your training circumstance. Um, my first year out, I was pretty much by myself. I think we had a couple high school kids. My coach right. still coaches high school track who um, I was training with. And now this year we have Mariel Hall. She's the reigning 5K NCAA champion. Okay. And we have Alfredo Santana. Kamara McDonald. So you're, you're Lucy turning Gates. into a super group. Yes, you know, we're just a nice, we're still pretty small and right. we're really intimate and we all just work well together. We push each other and um, we have a good thing going right now. Now, I don't know if you're somebody who writes down your goals, but when it's all said and done, what, what kind of times would you have liked to have run in your career? Wow. I don't know. Me and my coach, we don't think about times. I don't know. Really? I, ever since I was young, I never have. And, um, it just makes it easier to get through races just to compete. If you aim for the place, he always says the time will follow. So, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> now, Allison Felix also made that jump, skipping uh, college and going straight to the professional ranks. Um, I know that she had to sort of grow up very quickly because you go from being in high school where sort of everything is done for you and now <laughs> you do this for a living. What's the thing that you've discovered now that you're a professional track and field athlete that you could have never known couple years ago when you were just competing as a high schooler? Is there something where you went, wow, I didn't know that this is what happens in professional track and field? Well, honestly, I didn't even know that track and field, like, you could be professional. Really? <laughs> in all honesty. Yes, and then... So the first time they brought you a check, you went, hey, what's this for? <laughs> <laughs> well, the first time I just, I don't know, you know, watching races on TV, I never... You didn't know they get paid? I never, no, I didn't really think about it. I didn't really 
Well, I knew like for the Olympics and the bigger events, you right. know, they probably got paid for it, but I didn't know there was like a Diamond League circuit. There were, you know, races going on in Europe. I had no idea. So this whole thing has kind of been new to me. That's good for you. That leads me to my next question. So if you have, what's the first thing that you splurged on? Because, you know, you're young and <laughs> you like going to the mall and you probably like shopping and you're, on, you're earning your own money. What's the first thing you went out and bought? The first major purchase that I made actually was like two weeks ago. Really? <laughs> yeah. My mom always has, like, she's always been telling me ever since I signed, you know, it's okay to, you know, treat yourself. It's money, okay. Right. But, you know, it's just still taking some getting used to just coming from the background that I have. And um, I bought myself a new computer. The last wow. one I had, I got it. Don't, don't go <laughs> too far. Don't go, don't go crazy now, Ashley. <laughs> the first one I got was in eighth grade, and I worked all summer to get it. So I've had it for a while, and it was kind of kind of long overdue. You talked about looking at the Olympic Games and being inspired by that. Um, I believe there's only two types of athletes. The ones who feel like if I get to the Olympic Games and I get any medal, my career will be a success. And you have the other group who say, if I don't get to the Olympic Games ever and don't get an Olympic gold medal, then all of this will have been in vain. Which, which category do you fall into? I mean, obviously, I would think you want to be at the Olympic Games, but is it, it, is it very, very important for you to go there, set records, win gold? Um, it's not like a super, super, I need to do this or everything right. I've done will be in vain, but um, it's definitely a major goal, something that I aspire to now. You know, growing up, even in high school, it wasn't something I thought about. People would say, hey, you're going to be in the Olympics one day, you know, you're going right. to be a great runner. And I just have never allowed myself to dream until now. So I'm excited to see where I'll go now. now. There's a young girl probably watching this out there, looking at you and saying, she's my inspiration. Um, what sort of advice could you give to a young girl looking at you, who's probably really, really good in high school, about what it takes to excel at this level because as, as you know there's a whole lot of kids who are prodigies I think you're a, a bona fide pot prodigy thank you and they don't make it at the next level you're already having success at this level in you know what was your first year um, out of the high school ranks what advice would you give to that young girl about what it takes to make it all the way um, I would just say to find something that works for you find a great support group find a people that believe in you, believe in yourself, and stick with it. You know, my coach's wife always tells me consistency is key. Yes, it is, and especially I in think, this sport. Exactly, and throughout my whole career, that's something that I've kind of held to my heart, even though I never really realized it. You know, if things worked, I just stuck with it. I didn't try anything new. I didn't switch things up too much. I just know what works, and I know what's good for me. So I would just say, know what's right for you and go after it. So. It sounds like you're well on your <laughs> way. I'm glad we got a chance to sit down and have this chat. I think your future is, as everybody has said, boundless. There's no limit to what I think uh, you can do. Keep that head on your shoulders. And I think you have the right attitude and the work, right work ethic. Thank Thanks you. for joining me. Thanks for having me.